Cisco IoT Control Center is the world's leading connectivity management platform. But it does more than just connect and manage your devices. It's an engine for growth and profitability, streamlining your IoT journey from when you deploy your first devices to operating at scale. RevX is a control center super user, providing customers with an industry-leading solution for managing operations and subscription services. RevX addresses nearly every operational task around servicing revenue and connectivity. Please put your hands together for Mark Toner and John D'Angelo. Welcome, guys. Please take the seat. Hi. Hey. Yes. Yes. Did you see you, Anton? Yes, Anton. Good stuff. Make yourself comfortable, gentlemen. <sighs> so, uh, for those of you who don't know, I mean, John, and uh, by the way, Ajay as well, well, they traveled from California to be here today. And I think that uh, today here in Stockholm, they clearly can know what is the difference between 28 Celsius and Fahrenheit, right? <laughs> so uh, anyways, uh, we are talking about those interesting uh, acronyms and stuff, uh, so CMP and IOP. Maybe we should start with general kind of a statement. What do you do there in Revex? Maybe, John, you can tell sure. us a little bit more about it. And another acronym, uh, BSS, OSS. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> OSS. <laughs> um, so basically, we're an advanced billing and operating support system. We kind of rebranded around IOP, Internet IoT platform, basically. Um, and what we do is we primarily focus on the area of the market that has many, many subscribers, you know, either 1,000 or, or hundreds of thousands of end user customers, where downstream billing and also downstream uh, accessibility to SIM state changes and SIM management. Um, and we do all of that as an extension to Control Center. So we sit on top of Control Center, and we also do it all within your Control Center instance. So the billing and the operations is all within your account with Tele2. So um, you know, there are a lot of billing companies that act as MVNOs, and they put a middleman in between, but that's not what, you know, what you're here for. You have a direct relationship with Tele2. But you also may need the type of infrastructure to quickly go to market and scale your operations and not have the headaches and the hassles of, of managing operations and developing software. Yeah. So then, from my side, the same question goes to Mark. You see, for us, IoT connectivity and the Cisco connectivity management platform is very much like a little bit of a bread and butter situation, right? And we have been working uh, with guys from Cisco for a long time, with Mark specifically, and it has been always evolving. Every year we come with the new functionalities and features. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about Cisco and what does it have to offer? Sure. So, I mean, I think most people in the room are probably familiar with uh, Cisco as a broader organization, really believes in the power of security connecting everything. But the the part of Cisco I work in, the control center organization, we are IoT fanatics. You know, we really believe in the power of, of this. We believe in the benefits that it brings business, it brings society in, in general. So um, my colleagues and I, we, we get up every morning and we're just motivated by having a tool set to make the expansion of the Internet of Things possible. So, you know, we're the, we're the toolkit to allow all of the different variety and kaleidoscope of applications out there to really connect through your networks and bring value to the, our end customers. So coming back to the acronym reference, so CMP Connectivity Management Platform, IOP, IoT Operations Platform. So it seems like data is the new oil, and as an oil industry, you need the platform, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's very important, it seems, that the platforms are interoperable, so the use cases like this are enabled. Can you maybe, Mark, uh, tell us a little bit more about how important for you is to have this type of super users, as Judy called it in the video, as Revex or many others, really? Massively. Um, so, you know, we're a horizontal platform. We operate all around the world. We have, uh, you know, more than 240 million devices on there. So we're operating at a very large scale and we're providing a common toolkit for IoT customers that are out there. But, you know, as you guys will be aware, as everybody in the room knows, there's a huge diversity of applications out there. There's a huge diversity of how these solutions go to market in terms of, you know, monetization models and, and, and routes to market. So 
control center is a CMP. It does exactly that. We manage the, <laughs> the connectivity, but there's much more to a solution and bringing it to market and being able to monetize it and, and offer that end user support. And I know, John, that that's a, an area that you guys... Yeah, um, with Cisco, um, we went from being integrated with, uh, let's say, Verizon and Core Wireless to now being integrated with 50 carriers. So it instantly uh, broadened our range. It allows us as a company to really understand how that platform works. So if, um, if you're dealing with multiple carriers, chances are those other carriers might also have Cisco. So it eliminates the integration challenges and also the, it also eliminates a lot of the operational challenges so we understand you know how the process works and how they how they manage and talking about those operational challenges basically it seems that now the applications are more data thirsty they're becoming a little bit more complex and everything yeah. and more platforms are interoperable it is quite a big complexity in it so how do you guys sort this complexity on the customer side I, uh, from a from our perspective it's it's it might be more services so we're, we're a BSS OSS, so we're integrated with services. Services could be applications, they could be um, obviously connectivity, multiple connectivity partners, so, and we act as the hub, the center. When, when a new customer comes on and they sign up for a service, we're sending messages out to the underlying services that make up the bundle, that basically think of triple play in the old cable days, you know? Um, as, with complexity becomes, drives the value. You're not just selling a pipe and data. If we always try to um, suggest to our clients, you don't want to be selling just data because it's, it's very commoditized. They'll be like, why am I paying you know, this for 10 megs and I could be paying you know, 50 cents less? Um, but when you start delivering AI and, and applications and, and you're entitling and, and, and you know, provisioning these type of services around the customer, you have a lot of opportunity to tailor um, solutions that are value-driven in the customer's eyes. So if they're value-driven in the customer's eyes, they're going to be more sticky, they're going to pay more. And at the end of the day, I, I think one of our main objectives is to help maximize your revenue potential. And a lot of that comes from flexible billing models. Um, it, it comes from usage-based, um, not only usage-based data, but usage-based anything. It turns spins and clicks of a machine. You can monetize it all. And, and the only thing that's really hindering you is, is what your competitors are doing and, and how much of that you can get away with. You know, so, but at, at the end of the day, um, you know, there, are diff there are certain pricing models that really will drive a lot more revenue to your bo bottom line. And there are others where people just tend to give it away. So it's, 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 it's a quite a big opportunity. Yeah, I tend to agree because we are very happy to be working with Cisco because it helps us to actually come with the different flexible commercial models mm -hmm. towards our customers and then also so sort out even the most complex cases. Mark, anything to add on this complexity issue? Yeah, you know, I think... Um, I've been a solution guy most of my career, you know, and you, you have a business problem and you're leveraging technology to solve it. And I always like to start with the most simple. And I, I think the more, the more that we can, we can approach uh, problems with the common tool set, with a really s simple approach and layer on the complexity as it becomes necessary. And so our, our kind of role in this part of the ecosystem, I like to think that we're we're conceptually a bit of a bridge in between the, the devices and applications that are out there in the field, well, more the devices, and then the back-end applications uh, that are actually running the business. So we're the glue that, that connects everything in the middle through, through your networks and your, your partner networks. So really, um, we have a lot of power, but I like to think it's hidden quite well, that, that you know, they're, they're, we don't want to make things any more complicated than they, than they have to be. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, true. yeah. And from an operating perspective or a back office perspective, you absolutely do not want to introduce complexity to your back office. I mean, these are people that do not like change; they like to do things the way they've always done it. So you need a platform that could kind of address complexity. Like introducing AI is more of an application and maybe a cloud storage challenge that your engineers are working on. But from a pricing and billing and maybe positioning perspective, it needs to be very simple for people to understand. And, and for people to, you know, onboard and get on board, you know, pay for so, it. So, John, actually, the question to you, because I think you have a very customer-facing role and you are helping them sort a lot, uh, a lot of challenges, really. So, what are the dynamics on the markets when you are talking to the customers? What are the things which they want to sort out most? And how important it is to have a right connectivity uh, partner when you are doing those things? Yeah, oh, yeah. The, um, 
It used to be when, you know, we sell resellers, but they're all value-added resellers, so typically they might be selling a product of some type. Um, you know, we had trail camera companies where, where they got a trail camera from, from uh, the store or online, they had to run out to their, their Tele2 you know, retail store mm -hmm. or, or AT&T and, um, and insert a SIM. And you know, they show up at the store, they wait a half an hour, they, you know, the guy doesn't even know what this thing is. Um, by providing a, a branded portal that you get the thing, maybe, maybe you take a picture of the code or you, or you log in on the mobile app and you instantly activate it right there on the spot. You know, that's a huge value play. You know, that's, that's step A, you've uh, eliminated all the hassle of activating it. B, you're going to make whatever, two, three dollars a month or four dollars a month in profit between your connectivity costs and, and what you're selling it for. Uh, and when you're selling, let's say, you know, whatever, 100,000 cameras a year, it's every year you're making X profit on that that difference, but every year your subscriber base is going from 100 to 200 to 300 to 400, and you're making four dollars against 400, it adds up to a lot of money. So we've seen, yeah. And you know, John, I, I really love that. I think um, the secret to what we do, the secret to really successful deployments on Control Center, it's not about managing SIM cards efficiently. I mean, sure, I, I hope that we do that. Mm -hmm. But it's actually about leveraging the business benefits that you get out the back of that. And, and it's about being able to use it for more than just managing SIM cards. So, you know, we, we have customers who um, were able to take three phone calls out of every device installed by just implementing an API. Or we have another customer that, you know, used to have to pay their staff a lot of overtime repackaging products. But because they were able to use some automation to make deployments super simple, then, you know, they, they didn't have to force their, their staff to work weekends anymore. So it's, yeah, it's really when you find the business benefits out the back of this stuff that, you know, it really becomes valuable. Yeah, yeah. It's no, it's, it's really wonderful. And look, we have been talking a lot about the different tech-savvy uh, topics today. Last year, I remember Marco was talking about uh, AI and new bells and whistles coming in the Cisco Control Center. I think much appreciated by your end customers and stuff. So, Marco, is there anything cool uh, coming in soon? Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, two of the, the biggest areas, of course, are, are, are pretty familiar in hype, 5G and AI. And, you know, but. So just super quickly, AI for me is the next layer of IoT. I mean, if you look at a traditional IoT solution, a vending machine like AJ mentioned earlier, that you add IoT connectivity and then you can take card payments and you're able to know the stock levels and so you can react like that. Like level two, I kind of think of is when you start to learn from the data and you can optimize things and make predictions and you know, so you know that probably I need to fill up the Diet Coke every second Thursday. And then what AI does for me, at least in my really simple world, what it does on top of that is by merging different data sets and using AI, now your vending machine can proactively be restocked because it knows that there's a, there's a gig at the local stadium and it, it, it knows the demographic of that, so there's going to be high footfall and it knows the demographic probably prefers coconut water over energy drinks. Mm -hmm. you know? So solutions in general just become much more intelligent and I, I think that's the direction we're headed in. Exactly. Absolutely. John, very briefly, what would be the technology you are most excited about yourself? Um, well, twofold. It's some of the technology that we're introducing in, in the latest release, but even more importantly, I think the era of, um, and we're here now actually, where it, 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 like five or eight years ago and, and through a period of time it was just getting the device to work and getting the thing out in the field and getting it supported and, you know, and then, and then you start layering these applications and these services, you really t start taking advantage of, of a tracker or a, or a sensor or a device, and it's, it's connected to everything, maybe not even to just the cloud, but even other sensors. So these create opportunities to monetize. I mean, I'm looking at it from the service provider perspective. You know, like, there's a service provider delivering that technology to the vending machine company. It's not each vending machine you know, building that, but it's a service provider providing that. So when they introduce that sort of technology, they're able to charge more. So. Exactly. So, and we are all about all those hands-on experience and right. finally monetizing the IoT, uh, because it hasn't been happening for years, but right now, I think, we are into yeah. something. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your insightful presentation. Yeah. Let's give it up again for John and Mark. <laughs>